In this video, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to get started on Sub Rogue in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with skill cap quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, without a doubt, the best overall race for Rogue and Cataclysm is definitely human due to its active racial, which is called Will to Survive, which essentially kind of acts like a PvP trinket. This gives humans the ability to play with double damage trinkets, which gives them even more burst damage, especially in later seasons when PvE gear becomes more powerful. While Horde is overall less desirable, Orc is definitely your best bet, as the 15% stun reduction is good in Rogue Mirrors, and even good against mages and feral druids, and the increased attack power with Blood Fury can help increase burst damage during Shadow Dance. Now, alternatively, Undead is a fairly good option given the prevalence of Warlocks. Although Will of the Forsaken does share an internal cooldown with your PvP trinket, the additional CC break is useful in certain matchups. Overall though, nothing can really compare to human, especially in the last season of the expansion where PvE trinkets are absolutely just broken. So moving on, talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything you need to know. First up, you're going to need to spend 31 points into the subtlety tree before putting any points in assassination or combat. Now with that in mind, rogues have two distinct builds in Cataclysm but we're gonna start out with the most popular and arguably more competitive option. What you see on screen now is what's called the Backstab build. And as you might've guessed, this build invests a few points into a crucial Backstab modifier called Puncturing Wounds on the Assassination Tree. Now, moving on to the subtree, there are a few key talents that make the entire build work. You have two big ambush modifiers towards the top of the tree with improved ambush and opportunity. These combined with find weakness and then sanguinary veins can give you incredible burst damage during shadow dance, which is crucial to the sub rogue playstyle. And speaking of which, to learn more about sub rogue bursting and some unique dance sequences, be sure to check out our sub rogue course at skillcap.com. In the middle of the tree, there's another key talent here, and that's Energetic Recovery. This turns your Recuperate into more than just a heal, but also a passive source of energy, which is definitely needed for Arena. Your main flexibility for talents on the Subtlety Tree comes from Honor Among Thieves and Waylay. You can either put one point in Waylay and then two in Honor Among Thieves, or dedicate two entire points to Waylay and only one in Honor Among Thieves. Having more points in Waylay is technically better for control and passive defense, but we would recommend playing the build here to get the best of both worlds. And speaking of having extra passive defense, that's exactly what our second build is literally all about. This is what's known as the Hemo build, which puts one more point in Coup de Gras and ditches puncturing wounds on the assassination tree in order to pick up Improved Recuperate, which not only increases recoup healing, but also gives you 6% passive damage reduction while it's active. So here, you're once again trading some damage for some tankiness. Between both builds, Backstab is more competitive overall, especially in 3v3 comps that center around burst damage, like RMP and Thug Cleave. The Hemo build, on the other hand, is an alternative option which is designed for more attrition-based comps like RLS, but a Backstab build could work here too. Along with talents, the glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm. 
Now you have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. For sub rogue, you have two that'll never change regardless of build, and they are Glyph of Shadow Dance and Hemorrhage. Glyph of Hemo is crucial since it allows you to benefit from Sanguinary Vein without needing to use Garrote or Rupture. And this means you can easily keep a 16% damage modifier up on targets before bursting or just as a passive buff to your sustained damage. Now, if you're playing the Backstab build, your third Prime Glyph will be Glyph of Backstab, which should hopefully seem obvious since you're going to be using this as your main generator. But as the Hemo build, you're going to drop Glyph of Backstab for Eviscerate, since you devoted one more point to Coup de Gras and won't be relying on Backstab as a generator. For Major Glyphs, you're locked into three choices no matter what build you play. Blind, which allows you to safely CC dotted targets. Garrowed, giving you a longer silence and thus more control and pressure. And then Glyph of Preparation, which enables prep to reset kick, disarm, and smoke bomb. Yeah, that's right. You can actually reset the cooldown of Smoke Bomb in Kata, which enables an entirely new win condition. As the name suggests, minor glyphs aren't nearly as important, but Glyph of Distract is the only one that can really help you out in Arena. Beyond this, you might want to play with Glyph of Poisons for a quality of life improvement, just in case you need to apply your poisons mid-game. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP coming directly from our new classic course. Picture this, your mid shadow dance and land on five combo points. Should you eviscerate or should you ambush? Most of you watching this are gonna immediately assume you eviscerate, but this isn't always the case. Allow us to explain. Intuitively pressing eviscerate once you hit five combo points, it just makes sense. It is a finisher after all, but here's the thing. If we compare both abilities, an ambush costs 40 energy, does considerably more damage, and has a very high chance to crit thanks to improved ambush. Eviscerate, on the other hand, does less damage, but only costs 35 energy. And assuming you're using five combo points, Relentless Strikes will actually refund 25 of that cost. As such, when to use which is actually a lot more nuanced than you might first imagine, but can be broken down into some simple to follow rules. During the start of your shadow dance, if you hit five combo points, then you should always eviscerate, assuming you're not gonna need them for kidney shot. Simple enough. However, during the latter end of your shadow dance, there are a few extra considerations to be made. If your shadow dance is about to run out and or the target is very low, you should always prioritize ambush, regardless of your combo points. The rationale is simple. Ambush deals higher damage and is exclusive to Shadow Dance, whereas combo points will, of course, stay. Therefore, even if using Ambush means potentially wasting up to four combo points, it's still, by far, the optimal choice. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9, starting with your stat priority. Ideally, you're going to want as much agility as possible while hitting some key breakpoints, including at least 5% hit. After this, your goal is to get at least 3,000 resilience, followed by crit, mastery, and then haste. Now, you might have noticed that we skipped over expertise here, and while this is just as important as hit, it's very hard to get the expertise needed for PvP in Season 9. As the expansion progresses, though, you're going to want to make sure you're at the expertise cap of 20. Before we show you your best in-slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre bis gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. Now, despite what you might have heard, most of your best in-slot gear will come from PvP in Season 9. Your main pieces are going to include vicious shoulders, chest, gloves, and legs. And ideally, your helmet will be the heroic tier piece, which you could otherwise substitute with a vicious helmet if you don't plan on doing any PvE. Then for your off pieces, you could aim to get the Vicious Cloak of Cruelty, Bracers of Accuracy, Boots of Cruelty, and ideally the Belt of the Fallen Brood from Sinestra, once again using a PvP belt if raiding isn't an option. For your jewelry slots, look to get the Vicious Gladiator's Necklace of Proficiency for your neck, 
then a vicious ring of accuracy, and the heroic lightning conductor band from Blackwing Descent. Again, if you can't get this, just simply use a second PvP ring. As far as trinkets are concerned, there's a few options that depend not only on your race, but also potentially on your professions. No matter what though, you're going to be playing with the Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Conquest. Then, for your second trinket as human, you can play with a Bloodthirsty Badge of Conquest to give you an unused trinket for every Shadow Dance, or use an Insignia proc trinket for even more potential damage during Dance. But as a non-human, you're always going to want to wear a PvP trinket with the Vicious Badge for Season 9. Finally, for your weapons, simply use the Vicious Gladiator Shanker in the main hand, Shiv in the offhand, and then hatch it for your throwing weapon. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your caps and reforge any secondary stats to hit if you're below the 5-7% to cap, prioritizing reforging out of mastery or haste if it's possible. If you're above the hit cap, then any excess hit should be reforged into crit. So with your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants will not change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet and shoulder enchants are both from PvP and will be the Arcanum and Vicious Inscription of Agility. These are both acquired with Honor. Your cloak enchant is going to ideally be the Tailoring Exclusive Sword Guard Embroidery. But if you're not a tailor, simply use Greater Critical Strike. Then you're going to want Peerless Stats on your chest, Agility on your bracers, Greater Expertise on your gloves, or Synapse Springs if you're an engineer and then Major Agility on your boots. For your high-ticket items, you're going to want Dragon Scale Leg Armor on your legs, then Landslide on your main hand weapon, and a Weapon Chain on your offhand. You should also carry around a second Shiv with Landslide, in case you're playing against a team without a Disarm. And finally, be sure to buy a Belt Buckle for any extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get everything gymmed. For our meta socket, we're going to want to use Agile Shadow Spirit Diamond for maximum agility and bonus crit damage. Then in red slots, we're going to want to use Delicate Inferno Rubies. And in blue, we're going to want to use Glinting Demon's Eye, reforging hit off our gear in case we go above the cap. And then in yellow slots, we want Lucent Ember Topaz. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there's a few obvious choices that we need to talk about. Overall, your best profession is Tailoring, which offers the Sword Guard Embroidery Cloak Enchant, which grants 1,000 attack power as a proc, which can then be stacked with other damage modifiers in order to do some crazy, insane burst. Your second profession is a matter of preference. You could go Engineering for its exclusive Glove Enchant, but do keep in mind its effect shares a cooldown with your Onyush Trinket. For some alternative options, you have a few choices here. For consistency, we would recommend Jewel Crafting, which simply offers more raw stats in the form of epic gems, which you can use to maximize agility. And finally, in the later stages of the expansion, Blacksmithing might gain more value since in Season 11, everyone's going to have access to epic gems anyway, and having two additional sockets will provide even more stat boosts. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. Rogues tend to be macro heavy given the sheer amount of CC that they have, and as a starter, you're going to want focus macros for your main CC spells, which includes Blind, Dismantle, Gouge, Kick, Kidney Shot, Sap, and even Shiv. You'll then want to consider making additional focus macros for Redirect, and then a standalone Shadow Step macro. And then finally, a Shadow Step Focus Kick macro to make some flashy plays, of course. Many of the same abilities you're going to want in Focus macros, you can also use with Arena 123. Here, prioritize Blind and Redirect as a baseline, but add any CC spell you'd like here, including Cheap Shot or Dismantle. You could also do some crazy stuff here, like making Shadow Step Cheap Shot Arena 123, or even Shadow Step Sap Arena 123. Again, you can go pretty wild with what you decide to use for Arena 123, so we recommend starting with focus macros first, especially as a beginner. No matter what though, you're going to then want a sap macro to find other enemy stealthies, and then shadow dance macro, which uses dance, and then any trinket you might have equipped. Next up, you're going to want a tricks macro, either using party 1 or party 2, or even using your partner's name 
which would mean having to manually update the macro when playing with someone else. Finally, be sure to make a stealth macro, which allows you to mash your stealth keybind without instantly being broken out. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.